Uh, hey guys, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on here. Today we're going to be talking about courage. This is actually Latrice's idea. You may remember Latrice. She recorded a podcast with us on self-care recently. It was a really good one. You should definitely go back and, and take a listen. Uh, she reminded me again today about how self-care looks like getting someone to come in and clean your house. And paying <laughs> So my wife is going to really love that one. And, uh, and, uh, and thanks for holding me accountable to that. I, uh, always, always, that <laughs> but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about courage, uh, but in a really specific direction, uh, we've got Latrice note taker on here and Jim Stern. You guys have probably heard us talk about Jim Stern and you guys have been on here, uh, with, with his partner, Brian Kelsey before, uh, Jim, is is brian's partner with fox financial realty they are doing some pretty big things uh, in the realty world and, and just business in general and uh he has been one of my business mentors one of the most influential people in seeing summit and uh so it's, it's just a really big honor for us to have him on here today and especially talking about courage and calling out the gold in people and really just kind of sifting through and digging for uh, find, finding those really good things in people and just kind of pushing on them, holding them accountable, giving them opportunities. And he just really embodies a lot of the principles that we talk about all the time. So he's done really well at building and protecting relationships. Um, he truly does honor people and their giftings. And he, he's not one of those guys who likes to micromanage or control things. He loves to empower and give uh, and give people opportunities and also give them tons of room to grow into those opportunities. We talk about the principle of reproduction all the time of, mm. of just, you know, not just uh, doing something and scaling, scaling it through you, but reproducing it in other people so that they can do it as well. So that, so that it actually affects, it leaves a legacy. It affects the generations to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we talk about that all the time and Jim really embodies that. Uh, also, since we're talking about courage, like there's a lot of risk taking in committing to people and, and building those relationships, protecting those relationships. And, uh, and he does that in just a, a really uh, healthy way that, that shows a lot of strength. And, yeah. uh, and it also just takes a lot of courage to really stay hopeful, especially the, the crazy stuff that we've been dealing yeah. with over the past few years. And then now the real estate's going up and down. And it's <laughs> like there's a roller coaster. And that really just doesn't change. You know, every, if it's not one thing, it's another. But uh, he's shown strength and stability and also not giving up on people and stay hopeful in as, as they're reacting to the ups and downs and everything. So we're, we're just really happy to have him on here and to speak into those things. And, uh, and this, this whole podcast is actually Latrice's idea. So I'm actually just going <laughs> to hand it over to Latrice because she's got some really great things to say. Sure, sure. Never a shortage of good things to say. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for watching again. It was so much fun to do the self-care podcast, and I'm super excited to just share some of these things on my heart this week. So just to recap a little bit about myself, uh, my name is Latrice Notaker. I am married. I have three teenage boys that eat a lot of food and make a lot of mess. <laughs> but they are so sweet and a delight to my life. Uh, they're challenging and there is really the most rewarding work I do, but I'm also a bookkeeper by trade, um, bookkeeper by day, Chandler by night. I uh, do a lot. I have several bookkeeping clients and uh, Fox Financial Realty is one of them. And I also make candles um, to help other women that are like myself going through infertility, particularly infertility grief. Um, so a lot of the things that Stephen talked about are so very real. And so I just have so many stories about um, taking risks, believing the best, um, even knowing the proper boundaries of when you know it's something that you need to take care of, 
that takes courage. Uh, knowing when you need to delegate, that takes courage. Um, and then just stepping out there and having this uh, product, whether it's an actual candle or whether it's uh, a bank reconciliation that you're putting out into the world and saying, this is my best work. Um, all of these things take courage uh, that I'm excited to talk about today. So um, I can jump right in, or if you wanna get a little bit of an intro from Jim as to like who he is in his own words, we can do that. Hey guys, Jim, why don't you tell us a little yeah, bit about yourself? I'm just, I'm just embarrassed to be here by this point in the conversation. You guys have been so <laughs> kind to me, dear Lord. <laughs> Setting some high expectations here. That's what we Ooh. tried to do. Oh, man, killing me. No, I look, I, I love this kind of conversation because, um, yeah, we're, you know, we're in business, you know, to, to, to make money and to, have a career and to take care of our families and all that type of stuff, build a legacy. But uh, my, just my opinion, the people is one of the, is one of the key ingredients of, of how we accomplish all those things. Uh, the challenge with the people stuff is it makes me as a leader, my phrasing, put my big boy pants on, on a regular basis. Meaning I've, I've got to have conversations that are not my preference to have. I've got to have, Sure. You know, conversations that are the tough to have, but uh, you know that's that's what really separates the, uh, the the leaders from people who just repeat cycles of crazy behavior, right? How we handle the people in our life. So, sure. Well, thank you for that, Jim. Um, I guess it's kind of important to note that um, Stephen, I guess, hails from St. Louis. I yeah. guess. Uh, don't serious. let that tan fool you. <laughs> St. Louis boy. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in St. Louis, but I now live in the country in Eolia, Missouri, population 550, more cows than humans. It's beautiful, beautiful place. I love it. And Jim hails from, I, I call, I actually have a nickname now. It's called George Jim. This, oh. is, this is the, this is the Jim and his wife, Jessica 2.0. They're now in Georgia, and um, so it's just it's just kind of cool to be able to to come together via Zoom, uh, even though we're from kind of all over the place. So, uh, so enough of the introductions. I'm just going to start with um, my kind of initial thought. I want to take everybody back to February of 2020, um, maybe March of 2020. The corporate anxiety level was rising exponentially. There were so many changes taking place and it was just radically altering the way that everybody did everything. Maybe it's just my personality, but I was freaked out. I was trying to put up a good show and like make sure that I was putting on a good face to, to pretend like I was okay. Um, but really that fear was something I had to fight. Um, there were all of a sudden, a dozen decisions, uh, no exaggeration, that almost every human had to make that they had no idea what the implications were gonna be because nobody had walked through a pandemic before. Well, maybe like your great, great. No, they're all dead. Nobody <laughs> walked through before. They're fine. If they survive all that, then, um, then yeah, they're, they probably didn't even know what was going on. So I'm just saying every human, a friend of mine said every human was experiencing trauma at the same time. So uh, why are we having this podcast? <laughs> because there were about a dozen decisions that I needed to make. And um, I gleaned courage from people like Jim and people like my dad who just kept getting up. They had a vision for the future, doing the work, having their own businesses, not even knowing if they were gonna be considered, um, what was the word? vital or necessary business or whatever oh, it was yeah. what was that word yeah we all we know forgot, what it was. we've forgotten already uh, i mean we've whoever the government out of our decided minds. they want to keep in business they became essential i think is essential. essential essential yes that's exactly essential right. um we didn't know if we were going to be essential or not like how do you measure that well, and uh, the list i guess <laughs> anyway <laughs> <so>. <laughs> it definitely did 
also laundromat. My dad owns a laundromat business and you for sure needed to keep everything clean, but we just didn't know. Uh, So I watched uh, some of these folks in my life that I felt had an actual genuine vision for the future. And it encouraged me to make decisions, to grow my business, to, uh, to have the confidence when I felt shaky or when I was going through difficult things to just keep going. Um, and so I wanted to, for, you know, for Jim to speak to that, um, I wanted to give a little context um, as to why and, um, and to encourage other people to do the same thing because this is not the last 2020, you know, 2020 wasn't the last 2020 that's gonna happen. Um, there will be other things that we have well, to we're, face. We're headed, we're headed into a huge mess right now. I mean, it's it's not 2020, but it's it's a whole other level of just train wreck that we're charging towards nationally right now. So yeah, I mean, it's we're in it to win it. Let me tell you, it ain't going anywhere. Sure. <laughs> I w- For wanna, sure. I want to add a little context here. Um, you, Jim, you were going, you, you'd done some business, but you were pretty much making that transition into full-time business. I was starting a brand new business right when that pandemic hit, like right when everything started to shift is right when we first started doing anything. No, that's right. It's when we met. Yeah, I know I was in the process. I was still in the nonprofit world. Um, I was in the process of selling a business and in the process of starting a business all in that, let's call it first hundred days of the pandemic. That's essentially where, where my life and, and world and head was. And I didn't know where it was all going, but I would say, you know, and my overall decision-making grid, I think is, is pretty simple. You got to make short-term decisions in light of long-term realities. <clears throat> Most people make short-term decisions in light of short-term factors, and that can just lead to chaos. So going into the whole pandemic mess, if you've read any history, you know that crisis um, is almost always the, the catalyst for innovation and creativity. I mean, how many times have you heard somebody say, I lost my job and it was horrible, but then I blah, blah, blah. I went through a terrible divorce, but then after a few months, I blah, blah, blah. I, the economy crashed and we lost our house, but then I, you know, how many times have you heard that story? You've heard it over and over and over and over again. Well, and that's because- Uh, I'm so sorry, Jim. I need to stop. I need to stop (laughs) you right there. You need to go back to that short-term decisions for yeah, long-term we're, realities. We're sitting here taking <laughs> You said that way too fast. And uh-huh. there's like a ton of people, mm-hmm. I think that re- that needs to sink in. Okay, so so again, more the, more the long-term view, nothing stays bad forever and nothing stays good forever. If you're If you're killing it right now, fantastic. But you just have to understand you're not going to be able to kill it in this exact same way forever. Very few things you can just put on autopilot and, and let it run. It's it's the same way in business as it is in every single relationship in your life. Okay. So, you know, my wife, Jessica and I, we've been married for 23 years now. <clears throat> so we're, we're getting committed. It's getting serious. Um, we're getting gray hair together, the whole thing. But the point is, is that you don't stay married for 23 years, 43 years, 63 years because you put it on autopilot. That, that's how you wind up falling apart. You, you have to uh, kind of continue to evolve and tweak and whatever. So it's long-term thinking of, it's not always gonna be bad. It's not always gonna be good. Nothing lasts forever. But then it's also kind of knowing a little bit of that when it gets really bad, good can come out of it because the crisis can force you to do things that you would have never done or never had to do. It forces muscles, mindset, uh, behaviors. It, it just does. Um, and so going into the pandemic, again, I was in the process of selling a business. Me and a and, and friend of our mine, we developed several uh, franchise locations and believe it or not, I actually signed the paper 
to sell the business. The deal went through the day the stay-at-home order was <laughs> issued. <laughs> I'm not even making this up. Um, I, I got my, you know, the I get the the biggest check, you know, the one-time check that I'd ever received. <laughs> sold the business the day it was all shut down. Now I know what you're thinking. You're going, oh my gosh, you know that guy you, that you suckered him into. Well, no, he he wound up doing just fine because. You know, uh, it was uh, food industry with drive-throughs, and all of a sudden uh, their numbers went off the charts. So they had in awesome. 2020. So um, everybody won, <clears throat> but um, so I was doing that, and then I was leading people. You know, in a nonprofit setting, and people are all over the place. Ah, what do we do? What do we do? And you got the president at the time, whether you love him, whether you hate him. You know, they're all sorts of BS is flying around. And then there was the whole, you know, six weeks to stop the spread, that whole myth or whatever it is. And I would just remember sitting with, with everybody in my life saying, gang, there is no six week anything. That That's just all dog and pony show. This is going to go on for one to two years. There's no way around it. Do the math. We just shut down the economy. We're talking, th this is going to go on. This is going to be the rest of this year. This is going to go into 2021. You're not getting rid of this. And then, of course, everybody's arguing with me going, oh, no, this will be go away. By summer, it'll be normal. I'm going, okay, you can think that way, but I'm not. And I get that. Um, Jim Collins, in one of my, just a classic leadership book, Good to Great, he wrote about what's called the Stocksdale Paradox. And this is about General Stocksdale, who was uh, in uh, basically in a concentration camp, prison camp. <clears throat> and all these hopeful people were saying, hey, we're going to get out by Christmas. We're oh, my gosh. Out by spring. We're going to get out by this. And what would happen is, is they, they weren't thinking long term. They were setting false, hopeful expectations. So Christmas would come and they'd still be in the camp. And by the time, you know, New Year shows up, their heart just had imploded. And those were the people who flipped out, did crazy things, killed themselves, et cetera. And Stocksdale kind of held the line with just, hey, this might go on for a while, but we can get through this deal. And I would say that to me, if you're a leader, if you're an entrepreneur, and if you're doing a relationship with anybody on any level, if you don't think long term like that, then you think short term and your emotions drive your strategic decisions, which means you are screwed. You are going to make bad decisions. You're going to make impulsive decisions. And you're going to, on the people point, you're going to churn through people in your life. You're going to churn through business relationships. You're going to churn through people on your team. You're going to churn through the people that you hire. It's it's going to be just a nonstop thing. And so the only gotta, way to get out of that is you got to think more long term and ride the waves. I gotta I gotta stop. You just you just need to stop. Like <laughs> there's too many things. Um, first, I want to mention uh, on you know with with all due respect, I, I have I'm very sensitive when I talk about the Holocaust when I talk about concentration camps. Um, there is a unknown kind of hero in, in the narrative, in the story of Anne Frank, and that's her dad, Otto Frank. Most people have never heard of Otto Frank, but he did something similar to what you mentioned in the midst of unspeakable, excruciating, I mean, just a pandemonium, death, starvation, destruction, um, he pulled a, a young man aside and said, can you please call me father? And the young man was like, but you're not my father. And he was of course separated from his daughters, one of which was Anne. And Otto said uh, something along the lines of, I, I need you to remind me of who I am. And <laughs> he survived because he was reminded of his identity, of like who he was, that he had a purpose. And even perhaps he would, you know, he had hope that he would actually rejoin his family. He was thinking long term. 
And he was also pulling on, you know, his history of, of, um, of his family um, that was encouraging him to, to make it. So um, I, I wanted to just kind of mention that and pause. And of course, with all respect, but it's, it's people that are in, in the midst of crisis that have a vision for something that other people maybe don't see. Um, they have the courage to remind themselves of who they are. But he also, I'm sure, inspired other people, inspired that young man. Um, I'm not sure, but but I wanted to mention that story. Um, I also awesome. wanted to, what's that? I said, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a dynamic. Yeah. I'd never heard that before. Yeah, most people, most people have never heard that. Uh, but so I also wanted to mention um, the crisis forcing you to work muscles that maybe you didn't think that you could um, it puts you in a situation where you have to. I, I feel like, Stephen, you may have some, uh, some input on that, so I'll let you think about that, but I want to kind of mention something that I've had to do. Um, I like to talk very openly about the subject of infertility because I feel like not enough people do, and uh, maybe not too many of the guys that are on your team are dealing with this. Maybe their wives are. But a lot of the principles are going to apply across the board, whether it's loss of a loved one, whether it's sickness, uh, terminal illness, whatever it is. Um, when I received the worst news I thought maybe of my life, um, I had to all of a sudden make a lot of decisions very quickly. And I'm looking at the progress. I'm looking at the business, uh, this beautiful line of candles that other people are walking up to my table crying and you know just like I, there's so many people that I'm helping um I would have never in a thousand years been able to do that had the crisis that I walked through not forced this creativity um and the uh even just the the ability um entrepreneurship uh, the risk taking, uh, the, the crisis forced that to to the forefront. So, um, and Stephen, I, I I would love to hear if there are any moments. It doesn't have to be quite as intense as the two things I just talked about. <laughs> no, so it, absolutely, and, and it kind of is. You know, I I may have shared a little bit with you, Latrice, but my wife and I we've been we were married. We've been married. It's coming up on fifteen years this year. And uh, so, but for the first nine years, we were unable to have any children. And um, so it was, it was one of those things, and it, I, I'm going to tie this back into to leadership and courage and what we're talking about. Um, and maybe, maybe we'll have another podcast about that, Latrice, about the, the, the courage that it takes of, of receiving news like that. But understanding like what, what Jim was saying, like nothing stays bad forever. Nothing stays right. good forever. Right, and right. it's about having stability for longevity and uh, making decisions, making short-term decisions that affect, uh, that affect the long-term outcome. And I think so that good. when my wife and I received the, the news, um, there, you know, there, there's a level of faith that came into it as well. Uh, but we had to be brutally honest just about the condition that we may be in but with with the expectation that it's not going to stay this way forever. And um, so it was it was always just looking forward. Uh, but, yeah, we had to make some changes. We had to do we had to, you know, like you said, I had to make some decisions. And, uh, you know, in the pandemic, we had to make a ton of decisions. But I would say. None of, one of the things I kept thinking is when the pandemic is over, everything will get easier when it's this, you know, and now I'm, I've just realized that the ups and downs, the more responsibilities, your capacity increases to take on it, it never goes away. And uh, it, it's about when you're leading people, it's about being hopeful. It's about digging for the gold. It's about pulling those, um, those good things and it's about pointing to where we're headed but also you know if you before you can move towards where you're going before you can really set a course and plan and and 
actually put your, you know, put the work in and the work in the, the ground that you're, you're gaining, it, it helps with the hopeful, uh, you know, uh, in the hopeful arena, it helps you to stay hopeful, helps you to, to keep your eyes on the prize. But you have to, before you can do that, you have to be brutally honest about where you're at. You have to, like what Jim was saying is, you have to have those hard conversations with people. And there's a lot of people who are just not completely honest about where they're at and they want to get focused on the hopeful part or they want to get stuck in the hopeless part and I think that uh, not getting stuck in either one of those is really important as a leader to step back and say okay this is where you're at but here's where you're headed and um, and just kind of helping people put put the dots together you know uh, you, you speak to the, the individual and you speak the hope of this is not the way this is going to stay, but you, but you also say like, this is, Hey, you got some stuff you're going to have to go through. Hey, this is, this is kind of ugly the way you dealt with this. And if you continue to, to treat people like this, what's the point of getting where you're going? If no one you care about is going to be there with you, sure. you know? Um, so I, I did want to jump into a question like, like when you are, Jim, when you are having hard conversations with people, how do you keep the where you're headed in mind in those conversations? And sometimes that if people don't respond well to those things, you may have to cut ties. You may have to make a hard decision, um, you know, to, to actually you set a boundary to actually protect the relationships. So what how would you know just some practical advice in in when you're leading people when you have to have those hard conversations uh you know because those things are they're not going to go away i kept thinking they're going to go away they're going to it's going to get better we're going to figure this thing out i'm going to have all the time in the world i'm going to you know it's just not it's not a reality this that stuff never goes away and we're always going to have to have hard conversations. There's always going to be ups and downs. When one thing starts to get better, another thing's going to arise. So when you're leading people, how do you how do you project both the longevity and the short term, but also like this is this might be where we're at, but it's not where we're headed. Well, you know, I'll just be. I, this is just from from my experience. You know the easy path with people that you're working with, people on your team, people that you're leading, the easy path when you hit a conflict or it's just not working is to just be like, hey, this isn't working out, peace out. And to just yeah. cut them off and, and just move on. I think the challenge with that is that every, every time you take that course of action, it gets easier and easier the next time, right? Mm. So as a leader, you have to ask yourself, 10, 15 years from now, do I want to be the guy, do I want to be the leader that, that sees no potential in anybody because I've already dismissed them before I even hired them, truthfully, right? I've, I've met those people. They just, they, they have no hope in anyone or anything and, and, and they're miserable, right? <clears throat> now, that being said, I mean, you know, I have definitely had my share of people, people, you know, screw me over uh, over the course of my life. So there is no way to get out of that. Um, but what I've found is if I'm thinking, if I'm thinking long term, then I have the tough conversation with the person with the goal of trying to make this thing work. If 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 we can't find a way to make it work in the short run, we may have to part ways. <laughs> But when we part ways, what I want to keep in my head is this is a small town and this is a small world. And it's it's spooky how people come back around in oh, yeah. life, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. So yep. in other words, it may not work now, but I, I want to keep the door open for some other collaboration down the road, right? Sure. Um, whereas if I just just cut it off now, it's done forever. Well, at some point, you cut enough people off, you cut enough yeah. people out, you start to sabotage 
your your own success in in every single area of your life, you know. So I just, you know, I, I always try and, and, uh, and approach um, people like that. And then I would also say that's kind of married to this is the idea of scarcity versus abundance. Meaning um, a lot of times the reason why things aren't working out in the short run is truthfully because you, you, they do need to go do their own thing. Um, and there can be this this fear that shows up in, in a leader's heart of saying, well, if they leave and go do their thing, is that going to negatively impact me? And that's scarcity thinking versus sure. the idea that there is more than enough to go around. All of us can win and be successful together. The, the, the best thing for you is that the people in your world right now are more successful. The best thing for me is that you sure. guys are more successful, not less. Sure. So, Stephen, I have another kind of conclusion question that I want to throw out there for both of you, um, both or either of you. What are some practical things that I can do tomorrow to develop this contagious courage that, you know, wants to see the success of others, wants to face their own demons and their own issues and is thinking long term? making short-term decisions that affect my long-term goals or reality that I want. What can I do tomorrow? Because those things feel a little abstract to me. Um, tomorrow morning I wake up and how can I exercise this muscle? Immediately eliminate all <laughs> passive aggressive behavior. <laughs> <laughs> that is so destructive and just will sabotage you. Passive aggressive is there is nothing good that comes out of passive aggressive, zero good. Um, you will only lose respect with everybody in your life. You okay. will sabotage yourself and you will sabotage other people. So you have got to learn to become transparent and vulnerable and honest while you're leading and don't play any of those games. Out the gate, we have <laughs> number one, okay. <laughs> Uh, noted. Steven, do you have any, uh, tomorrow morning I wake up, I'm, I'm going to be more yeah. contagiously courageous. What do I do? You know, I, I, uh, when I coach people, I actually, when I want to challenge somebody, it's less about making a specific plan for them um, and saying, Hey, I have the solution. And it's more about, are we asking the right questions? So when, when, when I think about this uh, concerning what we're talking about is one of the questions that comes to mind is, am I protecting relationships at all costs, like over everything else? Like what Jim was saying, it's much easier to, uh, it's much easier to walk away from a mess than it is to clean it up. But the value after you walk through something, the value of that relationship only increases. The value of anything is the price that you pay for it. And if you end up paying a high price for a particular relationship, you the value of it only increases the more you invest into it. So are you protecting relationships at all costs would be one of the questions. I would, I kind of have certain um, certain questions that I'm always asking myself and judging my business off of judging my decisions off of yeah. and one of those questions is is this serving relationship and if if my decision is not serving better relationships then there's a good chance that i'm not going to do that thing uh, and then uh, another one is am i actually empowering people um, and so we have we talk about the uh principles all the time, you know, and, and the principle of what we would call stewardship versus ownership. Um, a, a steward has this idea that it's actually more, it's for a, a higher purpose. It's for other people, not just for yourself. An owner is constantly seeking about, seeking the, their own interests versus a steward is, uh, it's more about everybody else in the, in the higher purpose. So am I seeking to give these things away to other people? Am I looking for other opportunities? If, if I have favor or opportunities that come my way, am I looking to hold on to those things and bottleneck everything through me? Or am I looking to create more opportunities 
for other people? Am I adding more value than, than I'm taking? So am I seeking to empower or am I coming, you know, turning into an owner that now has to protect all this stuff that's on my plate? Everything gets bottlenecked through me. And that's really, if I could say that there's a source of all stress, it's putting more things on your plate than what should actually be there. Like real, real empowerment and, and, uh, and stewardship versus ownership looks like good delegation to me. Uh, mm -hmm. So are you protecting relationships and are you empowering other people? Okay. So I, I have one more thing to add to that. It sounds like we all kind of touched a very relational <laughs> um, focus on I'm waking up tomorrow and I'm gonna be contagiously courageous, if I can say that. I just like alliteration, so forgive me. Um, what I have to offer to that is not something you can wake up tomorrow and just be. This is a muscle that you are gonna be terrible at, like I was for a very long time, but you, again, this is my short-term decision. I'm gonna keep exercising this particular muscle because my long-term goal is I, I really wanna be that type of person that's that bright light in the room that can encourage other people, help other people, bring healing to other people, inspiration, all that. It will eventually serve me, especially if you're in St. Louis, because you will run into that person again and again so true. and again. You keep living, you will see them. Um, so and you'll see their family. And, and their kids, it's, and it's, their it's their, your Absolutely. kids are going to be on their kids sports team. It's just reality. Um, so one thing that I do for, for, I, I really try this for every human that I meet, that I encounter, that I'm around, I ask myself this question, will I have to change the way that I treat this person based on who they are, who they know, or what they can do for me? If I have to change my behavior and my, you know, be a little more polite, a little more customer service, a little more love, a little more grace, a little more whatever, um, then I, I'm not really being true to this kind of core value system that I have. And it takes courage to admit, maybe I'm treating this person a little bit differently because um, of something, it's, it's a utilitarian relationship. Mm -hmm. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, there, there's, there is, there's a little bit of my own selfishness kind of involved and I'm not really thinking, uh, I'm not really service oriented in this relationship. Um, so I ask myself that question when I meet uh, just about anyone, especially if I'm in a setting that is a, a long-term setting, um, a work setting or church setting, or, you know, I'm in, I'm in foster care, so I have to ask that question about my foster kids, you know, am I going to treat this, this child differently when I find out, you know, they can sing like crazy and they're going to make a billion dollars on, you know, whatever. Um, I, I ask myself that question and it's, it's, a, it's a pretty serious uh, core value that I have. I take it very seriously. Um, this helps me display courage. It helps me display, I have, I have a... Uh, I have uh, um, a contagiously, you know, courageous and just more life-giving personality when I come to the table asking that, asking those questions. Will I have to change the way that I'm interacting with this person when I find out what they can do for me or who they are? When I, you know, when I say who they are, I mean like, you know what I mean. <laughs> influential, have status, et cetera. Yes, yes, exactly. So, so I hope that was clear. Very good. I hope that was yep. clear. I feel like I feel like we can we can wrap it up. Yeah, thank you so much, Latrice. Thank you for uh, having this idea to have this uh, podcast on courage for uh, for suggesting we pull Jim in on it. Uh, thank you, Jim, kind of our guest of honor here today, and uh, and uh, I know. You have uh, you've displayed you know, strength and stability and, and all this, you know, and, and courage in, in just such a really healthy way for us. That's encouraged both me and Latrice. And we thank you for that. We really honor you. And uh, yeah, so so the challenge is, you know, it, it really all does come back to relationships and um, 
And I think if we were to, you know, we always end this with a challenge and, uh, and let's just, let's just ask ourselves, like in, in our business decisions, uh, if we're making decisions, life-changing decisions that have to do as a result of a pandemic or a life-changing circumstance, are we thinking long, long-term with these short-term decisions? And are these decisions that we're making protecting relationships? And, uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums it all up. Thanks again, guys, for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you both soon.